Good evening, folks. My name is Alex, and in this episode of Shall I Borrow, um, I want to first say Happy Thanksgiving to all of you Canadians out there. I know the Americans are having theirs next month, and uh, the craziness of Black Friday to follow, but this weekend it was the Canadian Thanksgiving, and a shout out to the Toronto Blue Jays, who are going on to the division finals, and they're total sweep of Texas. Yes, that's awesome. And it's right revenge. Today's topic is all about taping the bar on the head. And what does it do? And should you do it? Should you not do it? You know, what's what's the deal? So let's talk about it. What kind of tape do you use? Well, you can use lots of different tapes out there. Some people use electrical taping like this, some people use this other special 3M tape which is a much wider sort of sort of vinyl, polyvinyl tape. And it's all it does, what, what, what it actually does is that when you're playing on the membrane, the skin is busy flexing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on the uh, on the drum and it's you're getting energy transferred onto the tuning ring but you might get a little bit of flap to it and what I mean by flap is that as the skins passing over like this it's it's doing this over it and what you're getting are overtones you know you're getting sort of like a bounce back that comes toward the edge and then back in and then you start creating overtones if you like that sort of um, very 1960s, 1970s sort of sound off a of baron, a lot of those are not taped. Uh, a lot of barons from, say, Charlie Byrne, for example, um, are not taped. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, whereas if you pick up a Seamus O'Kane, I would say most Seamus O'Kane drums now, if not all of them, you can correct me out there, are taped to some degree. You know, you'll see them from Metloff, you'll see them from, from, from uh, Finnegan Hill, Irish Percussion, you know. And what they do is that they help control and dampen the overtones. So on my drum here, my Finnegan Hill, it originally, and I've been spending time actually adding tape to some of, some of my drums in order to change some of the profile a little bit of the sound, but not too, too much. One of the ones I put it on was my Finnegan Hill drum, and it originally had what... Um, Christian Hedvigshack calls the semi-taped head. So no tape head is literally nothing on the head. A fully taped head usually comes up and in a fair bit. I know there's a really interesting picture of John Joe Kelly on the Trad Center website for Seamus O'Kane. He's featured with a small 14-inch drum, and it's really taped in. Like We're talking like a good three inches of tape going into the center, and there's a very small center uncovered. So... To, and it really compresses and, and changes the vibrational qualities of the sound. But on this one, this was a semi-taped head, and it was, or would qualify as a semi-taped type of head where it's taped in. It's taped in about one width of what the tape more or less is, and then that's it. You know, certain benefits to that is just simply how much overtone or how much control do you want to impart onto the drum head. Well, I added one more on this one just to help control some of the tone and now I don't find myself searching for a lot of the the, the the bass tones and walking tones so how does it feel when you do this personally how it feels for me is that when I'm playing a drum that's taped like this which I would call a fully taped head you're it, it's imparting a quicker response back so that you have to maybe press a little bit less, you're getting a more, um, you're getting fewer overtones and a little more, how do I put it? I wanna say a push from the tone, but it's not really a push from the tone. It's, it's just that you've, it just changes the signature of the tone a little bit so that you knock out, you, you knock out the overtones and stick more with the fundamentals. You know, and that's what I did. I actually just taped one round in on this drum and now it is 
very much taped up to the sound that I like. What does this do for my type of playing? Well, I do a lot of the walking bass line. What it means is that I have greater control on the walking bass line for one thing. And another thing that I find is when the head is taped like this, if I want to play normally with the drum away from my body, I can still get a fairly neat and clean sound rather than having to force my body against the drum and, and be limited in some way to play. What is it taking away from the drum? Well, some of the overtones disappear, or at least are reduced. I haven't taped it in a way where they've disappeared completely. I don't want the overtones to completely go. But what does it mean? Well, if I'm using, say, tippers that are more like a dowel or something like this, it, it means that some of the highs are a little square and neater, and they're easier to control pitch and tone on the bottom end. What does it mean for using bundle tippers like this one? Basically it means that the top is a very neat clean punch sort of hit and then the low end is very warm and full. That's not any different to how this drum originally came to me when I purchased it, but the ability to control it a little bit easier. You know, it's a very it's a little bit of a neater sound. Does it cut down on the sustain? Maybe ever so slightly, that's my opinion. Um, I don't think it cuts too much on it. Now, if you taped right down the head and left just a tiny little circle here, then yeah, the drum's not gonna resonate as much because you have a membrane on a membrane. And because it's tape, it's not like one cohesive membrane, it's literally like this. You've layered it. So there's gonna be different sound qualities. You're gonna have a different feel to it. So, you know, if you are looking to tape your drum, be mindful of how deep in you actually tape it, what type of tape and how much tape you're layering. I would advise highly not layering tape on tape on tape on tape. You're better off just removing it and then applying fresh tape on a cleaned up head. That way you're not just loading garbage on top of it, this synthetic garbage on top of a nice good clean head. So that is my Finnegan Hill drum taped up. And that's as much as it's going to get taped. I'm not taping it any further because I want particular playing characteristics. I want particular playing characteristics. The Matloff that I just got included the semi-taped head and you can kind of see where right here is where the tape went in. And you might remember when I did the review on this drum when I talked about the the tom tom sound. That sort of sort of tom tom sound. I've added again one more section of tape on the inside. What have I done now? Well now the tom tom sound is still there. It's still there. But now it's a little more controlled and a little more curtailed so that it's not just this sort of too bouncy, too much flap sort of thing. There's a little bit more of a choke on it. So that now the drum will feel more quick in response back and forth. What does it do to the very top? Again, it makes the top very, very neat. I haven't ruined the sound at all. And what does it do to the bottom end? I actually find that it rounds the bottom end a little easier so that I don't have to you know, make a big surface with my hand to control the walking bass tone. Instead, I'm using more of the heel. I can use a smaller area to control it. For me, it means less strain on my wrist, for one thing. And number two, it's I'm more familiar to playing with it. So if I really, really, really don't like this over time, I can remove the tape on the head, just that one section, without removing the original tape that was on the drum. So if I make a mistake, I can remove it. So it's not a huge deal. The truth is, I do like that type of sound, that little bit more controlled sound, more so than a full out, you know, flap. Um, what does it do to the resonance on this drum? It may slightly take some of it out, but the resonance in this drum is perfectly fine. It's more or less the same when I got it. So. It's just a little more controlled. It's a little 
more neat and tidy as a sound, I should say. But it has, again, all the same tom-tom, the sort of the, the, the tom sounds that it always had. It just means that it's a little bit easier, more comfortable for me to apply myself to it. So that's the Matloff done. The last one I taped up was my Shane and McGrath drum, and I taped this one up a little bit differently. I taped this up more like the Christian Hedvig Shack Coraline bullet model. This is also a 14 inch. I've taped a little further in. I've done two steps inward of tape. And this drum already being small shoots quite a little column of air. But now it has a very clean sort of sound. And what it's done instead of having um, a squared off sort of, how do I put it? It's almost like a completely sharp and square sort of top end. Instead, what's done now, and I haven't tuned this, so pardon me. Um, what it's done now is that it's cleaned up the top and it's really punched the bottom. It hasn't made it the drum any more deep in sound, but for my playing, it has made it a more manageable system to attain certain sounds. This drum now, which has been taped more severely than the other ones, is ready to go. And is, at least for me, because this is a drum I would like to do some recording with and playing more live. Right now this drum doesn't see any sort of flock kills. Well, now it's set up for flock kills. Now I can take it out. Um, yeah, this drum is now set to go. It's, it's now set up to how I like to play in groups, so. Excellent. Shane and McGrath drum can make its way to the flock kill. So, question of should you tape your drum? Yes and no. I mean, ultimately, what do you what do you want for sound? You know, what is it? What are the playing characteristics that you want? What is the effect that you want? Some of the effects you are not going to get um, that with tape. Uh, there's uh, Cormac Byrne, I believe, in an interview was telling uh, the interviewer that why tape isn't on his signature series, for example. Um, his, his signature series from Hedvig Shack, or why when he used a lot of Brennan White drums, why does he like the bigger and why does he like the untaped heads? And he says, well, your body, if you hold it under your breastbone, you can just control the compression and you can control the, the flap. And that's perfectly fine. That's what he wants to do. So it's not that you can't, you, you can't do away with it if you put tape on it. And it doesn't mean that you can't have that control. It just means that you adjust your playing style, you know. And this is where, for beginners, you start stepping away from some of the aspects of being a beginner player and get into the intermediate and the higher levels. At least to me, this makes more sense here and through feeling. That you really start honing in on the sounds that you really, really like. And then you're going to start doing some things to change it, maybe, maybe not, or requesting a drum from a maker where they tape in into the head a little bit more, or, or not. You know, there are other methods of taping. Some people will run the tabla ring of second goat skin underneath the drum, which does more or less the same thing. Uh, Forkner at Metloff adds the patch from the tabla drum on the small 14s and 12s that he makes. I think he makes 12s, but on 14 he would. Um, or at Christian Hedvig Shack, if he applies the uh, the the clear coating on the TR head, for example, is a model that doesn't have any taping, but it has a tape. It has a clear it has a clear adhesive substrate or a clear uh, solution, which cuts some of the overtones down, but doesn't cut all of them out. In fact, it, you really can't tell. It just cleans up the sound of the drum and makes it a little more accessible for people to play. So. The pros of taping, you know, you're going to have to experiment with that. You have to really, really like that modern, compressed, contemporary Bob Bauer on sound. The taping is pretty much mandatory for that. But you don't have to do it if you don't want to. If you love the sound of your drum, 
don't change it. There's nothing wrong with it. The only thing I've done, and, and the band, again, I highly stress, the reason why I taped the drums I have now is that I wanted to change the playing feel a little bit and sharpen up some of the things that suit my playing style. Outside of that, it is totally up to you. I'm not going to be changing skins on drums. I'm not uh, clever enough or skilled enough to change stuff on drums apart from just doing the taping and prepping ahead. That's all I know. So should you be doing it? Ask around. I think that taping is probably the, ha the least harmless thing to do. It's cheap. It's effective. And, you know, it's just like it came from the shop. It's already got tape on it, or you'd be using the similar tape as that they would be using. So it's up to you. You know, try stuff out. At least if, if you don't like it, you can remove the tape. But, you know, you still have to go back and re-clean the head properly. If you have an issue of getting adhesives off of the head, contact the maker of the drum originally. Contact uh, some of the people who provide the skins. And ask them if there's a particular cleaning solution or mixture that they would recommend that you do that. Do that before you actually start removing it and scrubbing it off. I mean, if you do a light sanding on it afterwards, that does remove the, the adhesive, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend you start to just go out and sand the head on a drum that maybe has already been played in. So, you know, you know, you the taper beware. Talk to the experts about it first before you remove the tape. You know, I'm just going to tell you why I put tape on and why I chose that. So that is the reason for why I like to tape it, why I've recently taped it, and why you may want to consider taping a drum. You know, the very tonal drums these days are usually are taped up. The very percussive ones usually aren't. But the secret to tonal and percussive playing is not taping it. It's how you play on the back of the drum. If you're interested on tone control, check out my video episode three, which is the tonal hand. Um, I will probably do another video in the near future about doing tone control on, on the back of the drum. Again, some of the more popular sounds and whatnot, instead of just doing a, a general soundscape like I did in episode three. But check out episode three if you want like an introductory thing or to go back if you haven't looked at some of my earlier videos at my old apartment, do so. You might find them a little more helpful. So, till next time, have a good one, and again, happy Thanksgiving. Bye.